Hey all. About a thousand people have uh, asked for this one, so let's run through uh, Gimme Shelter and Standard Tuning. This wouldn't have been the way uh, Keith did it on the uh, Let It Bleed album. And I assume Mick Taylor's on that, uh, that recording of it, but I don't know for sure because he was sort of had limited involvement in the, <laughs> the Let It Be album, so he may not even be on it at all. But certainly Keith's main uh, part, doing the main riff, is uh, in open E or, or in the neighborhood of open E. Um, but I did, uh, I, I posted two versions, one in open E and I did one in standard tuning, which um, you, need to, you need to be in to do the... To do the guitar solo, you really need to be in standard tuning because the solo is in standard. Um, so let's run through the standard tuning version, even though it's, uh, I don't think it's really uh, the easiest way or the best way to do it, but a lot of people want to know this, so <laughs> here we go. It's in uh, C sharp, done up here, not done here, but barred up here. Um, so for the opening, the intro, it's this kind of... So you take a, take your bar C and you do the sort of the, the top the highest four strings of it, right? So you know B and E at the what is that the ninth, G at the tenth, D string at the eleventh. So on these chords, the first two chords they're identical, and you're suspending the G string from ten to eleven. Now, for, for at least for the first part, you're just kind of picking the, the D and the G strings on this. Right? Just on and off of that G string, and, and just the two strings, D and G. And then the same thing, two frets down. Now, on this next one, it's the same chord shape, except the G gets suspended two frets up instead of just one. Going back up again, two frets up, and it's the same suspension. Okay, so now it gets a little bit more uh, involved in the, the picking, and you add the B string to it. You kind of climb up to it. You can listen for yourself to the, you know, to the recording and see the pattern of that. But those are the chord shapes, right? And then eventually goes through those, all the, you know, the same shapes all the way through, and then uh, gets into the. It's a regular barred C sharp. So it's really this. Right, so that's, that's, uh, what is that? It's E, E, F sharp, back to C sharp. But you want to, you want to keep that low C sharp note ringing on it. So. sort of D and G. D and G strings at 9, then 11. And then you just hammer on all. the chorus part. So when it goes first goes into the chorus it's the C sharp bar. Major. 
So that second one is the is now a it's B, but suspend it on the G string, just like you did on. In fact, if you could do it, if you bar over the top, you could do it like that. But uh, if you're doing straight bars, so that is uh, bar all the way across at the seventh. Then uh, A, D, and G two frets up at the ninth. And I don't play the B and the E on this chord. Then to a regular A. So that's open E string. Keep the everything on, just take your finger off. Now the second time through you're suspending that uh, C sharp chord the same way you did on the way down on that, you know, B chord. And that really is the whole tune. Um, there's nothing more to it than that, really. Um, if you want to do the solo, it's... Uh, it's C sharp uh, minor pentatonic is, is the scale. And uh, I'm not going to run through it. That's for you to do. And uh, I know I'll take a lot of grief from that in the comments for not showing you solo. But that's, that's not really the point of my uh, channel. It's to get you to figure it out. So watch, if you want to learn it, it's easy actually. You don't, it's all in the one position. <laughs> solo but it's all in that same uh, in the same frets it's the entire thing is done on the DG and B strings uh, between the 9th and 11th frets and then on the B string here at 12 I mean you could come up with your own uh, you know solo for it but if you want to learn it it's all in that one shape, all in that little minor uh, pentatonic box. And there's some good bends, and it's actually a good one to learn if you want to learn uh, learn some basic soloing, uh, note for note. But if you if you look closely and listen closely, and you become attuned to it, again, you know that's you could tell that's Keith doing that solo. Some people might think it's Mick T, but it's not because. That's just Chuck Berry riffs. Anytime you hear this in a Stone song, or something like it, it's Keith. 100% every time, every single time, that's Keith. Um, so if you, if you try to get it tuned to uh, his uh, tendencies, that's one of them. So uh, just think about it. There's no chance, being the Chuck Berry freak that he is, there's no way he would allow uh, somebody else to solo, uh, you know, that that kind of soloing. <laughs> he's he's going to do it. Uh, so that's how you know. But anyway, that's the whole thing. If you have any trouble with it, let me know. But I think uh, on the solo part, if if you give yourself uh, a little time, just working it out and fiddling around with those. <laughs> with figuring those things out. There's, there's only like five notes in the, in the actual solo. So good luck. <laughs>